Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm going to talk to you today about this is something I've been waiting for quite some time. You guys keep sending me all these beautiful builds uh, that you've been building and a lot of them based on my, uh, my Gapser TD1 DAC and some other things as well. And I haven't had the time to actually showcase them here on my channel. Finally, I've got some time. I'm going to start showing you here and there some of these builds. We're going to start today with Rafal's Gapster TD1 DAC build and uh, this is a very impressive build as you can see and wait till you see some of the details. Uh, what you see here is the top part of it. Now if we look uh, from the back of the DAC you could see that it's actually there's two layers here one on top and one on the bottom and if we stand it on its side you could see that it has a double layer there's a top part and the bottom part. Uh, the top part is where all the DAC components are. You can see some of uh, Ian Canada's uh, streamer parts and my Gapster TD1 DAC. And on the other side, you could see a lot of my uh, Gapster CRC uh, filters. You can also see Ian Canada's Pure Pi as well on the bottom. Basically, it's a two-sided thing. It's trying to isolate the power part from the uh, and it's a from the DAC and it's a clever way because that gives you the shortest wires from the CRC filters to the to the DAC itself so you have the shortest power supply uh, wires and that's pretty good to keep all that ESR low. And then you may ask well what are the uh, actual power supplies? The power supplies are he's got a big stack of uh, I believe a bunch of different uh, Power supply. Some of them are Studer 900, uh, basically. So it's as simple as you plug in the DC jack into my Gapster CRC filter that does all the magic, and then goes into the DAC, and boom, you've got a whole system going. Now, Rafael also describes the sound that he got from the Gapster TD1 DAC and what he likes about it compared to some of his other DACs. And this is exactly what he says. I'm just going to post it on the screen here. He talks about that compared to a well-regarded commercial TDA15418 DAC made in Australia, while overall tonality of the chip is there, TD1 provides a more refined sound. There appears to be less grain in the mids and deep layered sound stage. While these differences are subtle, the biggest difference is in the depths of the 3D sound stage. Compared to an R2R DAC, a musician Taurus, while refinement is on similar level, the Gaps 31 offers thicker, wet sound with more dynamics. So basically, that's basically how he described the sound. And I completely agree with him. And that's exactly what I found with my DAC. I spent a lot of time working on the grounding. The, it's a four layer design. The grounding is pretty well. I think I, I, uh, some parts I nailed it by design, some parts by luck. And uh, at, at, at the end, turned up to be a really nice design. And uh, just the way the capacitors, all, how everything is separated. If you notice, there's some a clear separation from left and right channels. And uh, all these, what most people think, they're little nothings. But when you add them up, they become something at the end. And that's what makes the sound so deep, so wide, and so holographic, and makes a fairly a big difference at the end. If you have any questions about Rafael's build, please leave comments comments below, uh, he might chime in. The clever thing here that Rafael did is that on the TD1 DAC, you do have the option to power the uh, output stage separately. And not only that, you can power the left output stage separate than the right output stage. So now you have power to the main TD1 DAC, and then you have power to the left output stage, power to the right output stage. So by providing again those separate power supply, you're going to get even slightly more separation than uh, if you didn't. Uh, when I created the Gapster TD1 DAC, I made almost every possible option you can imagine that you can actually fine tune by just moving some jumpers. And this comes in handy, and you can see that Rafael took on, on that option. And he did, in fact, it 
talks about there is a slight improvement, not a huge, but a slight improvement in separation by providing uh, separate power left and right. There was a beauty about the, those little power supply that you can buy from AliExpress uh, very expensively. It's uh, ready to just plug and play. They have their built-in transformer and everything is, and it works pretty good. Now you also see that on the bottom there is actually a Pure Pi by Ian Kanda. This is another really good power supply that actually it's quite simple. Again, you plug it from 5 volts into it and it has uh, two things. It has a couple batteries actually and a couple uh, super capacitors. And that provides power to the clocks of the 54Q7, which also by in Canada, which is actually a reclocker. If, if you guys are not familiar with this, uh, the way it works basically, if I'm for those of you who are quite unfamiliar with all these parts and what the heck is going on here, uh, just pretty simple. So you've got basically a Raspberry Pi providing the streaming, or you could also have an input. Uh, either it could be uh, RC, like a coax or it could be an I2S signal coming from another streamer, say maybe a Wim or a Never Solo or any other streamer that you may have. And uh, so you could plug it in or maybe USB from your computer. All these can be integrated into the INCADA system. And uh, so you don't have to just use a Raspberry Pi, but the Raspberry Pi is also an option. You could configure it as a rune server or configure it as a volume or other things. But uh, so there's quite a few things. But the main part here is in this system is that we are reclocking the signal. So we're getting this kind of not that great uh, I2S signal that's coming either from your USB or from your coax or your I2S or Raspberry Pi. We're going to reclock that into a better system with very good power supplies. And then we're going to send it to the Gapster TD1 DAC. And uh, by providing those amazing, great power supply, we are going to bas basically get the best sound possible out of the TD1 DAC. Now, uh, so you might ask, well, uh, I've got really, a, you, this guy need like a lot of power supply. Yes, you do. And uh, this is what makes or, or breaks the sound. Just think about it. When you, uh, if we take an op amp, for example, or any output stage, you're supplying it with power. So that sine wave, which is the sound, uh, it's created by plus and a minus voltage. And often you'll see op amps requiring, for example, plus 15 volt, minus 15 volt, or plus 5 volt, minus 5 volt. And the reason why is you need the plus and minus to be able to create an up and down. And that's how you create the sound. But when you think about it, that sine wave is coming from the power supply. And you're actually listening to the power supply. Uh, it's, it's hard. Some, some people think that oh, the power supply is not doing much. This is what you're actually listening to. You do listen to the power supply. Rafael talks about things that he learned by building uh, some of his projects and he's sharing some of the mistakes he's made and some of the things that he, would rec he recommends you guys to use. And I'm just going to put some in the description below, but I'll just go through them quickly here. So he talks about basically the construction of the center plate that's basically in between. Remember how he has the top part and the bottom part. And he said that that's a really good way to actually do a project because it makes things a lot simpler. He talks about uh, wires that he used some Teflon coated wires. And that seems to be helping because some of the wires he started with were fraying and causing problems and uh, ended up using uh, those kind of wires. Adding screw terminals on the TD1 board in case you want to basically do a lot of testing with it, like if you're taking it in and out and moving things around a lot. And the TD1 board has provisions for that. I just, most people don't use them, but you can actually put terminals on there. He's talking about using some aviation connectors. The aviation connectors, actually, I spent like a couple of days sometimes looking for cable and finally learned that uh, term. Uh, they use them, it's, it's a type of cable that you use and has basically 
nice connectors at the end. It's great if you want to send, for example, from your power supply, uh, maybe like 10 or 20 cables to another box. And that makes it really good. I actually bought one myself for my next project. You use some pink nail polish uh, to mark some of the positive uh, uh, cables and I agree with him always use markings this is the biggest mistake Do not using color coded wires it's just an easy way to switch wires around before you know it you're frying not only your TD1 DAC and some chip you could fry your whole system and maybe your expensive amplifier he's also talking about using some copper uh, sheets to uh, wrap things and ground things and also he talks about a good soldering iron that he used. I'll put all that in the description below. Now with Rafael's system here it's not completely finished like as you can see it's still on its uh, building stages and uh, but you can see that the metal plate that's in between all he has to do now is just put some sides to it and now you get on the top and the bottom and you get a box so it's all in, can be enclosed in a metal box and that's very important when you're creating any project in electronics that has power it has to be at the end enclosed it's nice to experiment here and there under close supervision but when you finalize your system it has to be enclosed in some sort of a metal case you'll see that all these crc power supplies uh, and all these CRC filters and in Canada's uh, pure pie, eventually they're going to be in an enclosed uh, box as well. Rafael's been excited about his uh, new build and he's actually, this is probably his third build, I think. He's done a quite a couple. He's on a new one now. Uh, he keeps sending me some pictures and some, uh, uh, basically, some new ideas. So it's pretty exciting and I think he can really hear the sound difference and that's what keeps him uh, excited about this project. Uh, if you have not joined my Patreon, there's a lot of things that I discuss on my Patreon channel that I don't discuss here. And lately there's been some really exciting new developments that you might want to actually join. It's fairly inexpensive, might be the best thing you can do as an audiophile. And uh, especially there's, like I said, there's some really uh, recent development that you might like to hear about. Uh, I'll put a link of the, my Patreon uh, link in the description below. There'll be a link here about my Gapser TD1 DAC, and here about my CRC filters. There'll be a speaker if you'd like to subscribe and help the channel. Take care and I hope to see you again.